Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is AI behavior tree decorator, the does path exist node. So I fired up a quick little example. We're actually going to run through the example and then I'll cover how the node works and we'll see it in detail. So for my example here, I have a AI enemy that is moving to my location, waiting through seconds, and then moving again. But it's using the does path exist to make sure that it has a good path to path on every time it needs to path. Now this little section over here I've set up where the nav mesh does not cover. And you'll notice our player, our enemy, cannot get to the player, therefore he's not even going to try. It's going to abort on that behavior tree. If I go back to my movable area, you'll notice he'll move over successfully. And to demonstrate that, you can see here's my nav mesh, and here's the unreachable nav mesh area that is set up to not be reachable. So let's go ahead and look at the decorator and see how it works. Keep in mind, decorators are a way to basically program your behavior tree without having to need services and other things that can duplicate, but with less code work. I mean, it's a simple helper node. That's what it's for. So let's see how it works. Now, by default, we're going to come up with these following values for the does path, does path exist node. Decorator nodes can be added to any composite node or any task node by just right clicking add decorator and then you can find the does path exist node. So in our case, we need a blackboard key A, a blackboard key B, and then what type of path it's going to use. So for my example, I'm setting up the location of the AI as the blackboard key A, and then I'm setting up the location of the player as blackboard key B. Now, path query type basically has three settings. From top to bottom, you have their speed. Really fast, fast, and slow. By default, it's going to default with fast. And of course, unless you really need the extra performance from this node, you can go ahead and leave it as such. Inverse condition basically flips the check. Right now, if a path exists, this is going to continue on. If we use inverse condition, then it's going to reverse the condition check. It's going to succeed if the path does not exist. So you may have one here where it moves, and then you may have something else, for example, where if it fails, it's then going to maybe wait 10 seconds to try to find a different path, or maybe it explodes. Maybe, you're, maybe you made a mouse trap, and once you've successfully trapped the mouse, you no longer want them to do anything, so you set it up where it dead ends, and they have no valid path, so there's no point in checking any other further AI. So that's how you would use the inverse node connection, inverse condition checkbox. Under that, we have our normal things, such as flow control, which allows us to change when the observer aborts. And then we have the node section for the navigation mesh. By default, if you set it to none, it's going to use the default filter on your nav mesh. If you have multiple navigation data, then you can choose which navigation data it will use for the move to and checking if the path exists. If you are doing multiple navigation meshes with navigation data, you will know if you need to use that or not. By default, leave it at none. Most people will only have one set of navigation data. So let's watch this working. Let me drag this back over and pull it down. And we're going to go ahead and watch this in motion. This is extremely large. Let's see if we can, you know, let's see if we can stack it up like that. There we go. Okay. So when we go ahead and play, you're going to see we have a valid move to location. Once it gets there, it waits three seconds because that's the way we have our sequence set up. You'll see it move to me. Once it gets there, it waits three seconds, and then it will move toward me, and then wait three seconds. Now, if I move over here, we're going to see an issue. When it attempts to do the path does exist, which is right here, you're going to notice this red mark because it failed. 
it is not able to find a valid path from the enemy to myself because there is no valid navigation mesh that lets it move. Once I move back over here, you're going to find it fires off again and it runs successfully. And it will continue, of course, until it can no longer find a valid path exists. When, of course, I fall off, so that makes a super failure. Now, in this case, this is where it's kind of funny. You're going to notice it's actually working. I'm not doing any validation checks. This is a generic example. What you're seeing is the AI location attempting to get to the player's location of 0000, which technically has a valid path, and that's why it will continue moving. So, in this instance, make sure you actually have valid sanity checks, like when you kill your player, do other checks in your behavior tree, like does the player exist, then do your AI. And for example, it shows that using the path exist, because you're using a location to a location, you always want to have some sort of sanity check in front of that to make sure even though you have two valid locations, make sure you actually have a reason to do it. So that's it. That's what our does, does path exist decorator node does. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.